Well, good morning, everyone. I hope that you had a great weekend. I know I did. Uh, we had a great weekend at the journey, and I hope that you uh, were a part of that. And I'm looking forward to another great week, uh, just serving the Lord. And and the reason why I say it that way this morning is, is um, in Judges chapter number two, we see how fast uh, a people can go from being pleasing in, in, in the Lord's sight, serving the Lord, and then not. Um, the slide from faithfulness to unfaithfulness is instantaneous. And I don't know how many of you recognize that. Uh, the, the road, uh, the, the path from honesty to dishonesty is just one lie away, one cheat away. And, and uh, we have to guard ourselves for that. And, and that's part of the reason why we need to follow and, and live so closely uh, to the Lord. And I know that there's a lot of things out there. In fact, some of the reasons why um, I think that uh, God's people in Judges 2 went from serving the Lord to not serving the Lord had a lot to do with pursuing all the benefits of being in the land, the land of plenty and the land flowing with milk and honey. And so let me just read to you. Uh, really, uh, it starts off really, really neat. It's, it sounds so good. And then all of a sudden, in one verse, it goes from good to bad. And uh, listen to this. It says, and when Joshua let the people go, <clears throat> the children of Israel went every man into his inheritance to possess the land. <clears throat> go, go enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Verse number seven, and the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen the great works of the Lord uh, that he did in it, it did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being 110 years old. So he lived a long time enjoyed the land for it uh, looks like about 20 years um, maybe a little longer than that maybe 30 uh, and, and and they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnah Haras uh, in the Mount of Ephraim on the north side of the hill of Gaash and and then this to this next one and also all the generation were gathered unto their fathers uh, uh, this here's here it is that that statement and the, all the rest of that generation the generation that conquered and entered into the land and received the possession of the land and the inheritance they all are gathered to their fathers which means they died look at the next phrase uh, and there arose another generation after them which knew not the lord nor yet the works which he had done for israel so mom and dad loved the lord served the lord worked hard to be a blessing from uh, to live out the blessings of the lord but their children didn't know the Lord. Uh, and you might be saying, well, how is that possible? Well, we watch it happen every day here in the United States. We get busy about our inheritance. We get busy about our careers, our material gains, elevating in the ladder of success. And in the process of giving our children every single thing they'd ever want and making sure they have every possibility of, of success in every avenue that they seek, we teach them that everything is more important than the Lord. And when they get older, they do not know the Lord. Uh, they actually come to the conclusion that they are God because mom and dad have worshipped them so hard. And I know that you're listening to this and you're going, wait, wait a minute here. <clears throat> That's not what it says there, but it does. It says that they got their inheritance. They went in and were about their inheritance they were no longer in the presence of Joshua and the elders, the ones that kept them walking spiritually. And it doesn't mean they went and did bad things, but their children eventually did those things. And that gives us an extra pressure to pay attention to what we're doing and why we're doing it, what we're presenting to our children. Because we want our children to grow up and know the Lord. I think that's the, the hope of every godly person is that their children will grow up and love the Lord. I know that I have this battle in my own home where I'm hoping that my children will grow up and honor and love the Lord. And I hope that that's your plan too. But one of the basic uh, distractions from that is giving them everything they need to succeed here. And I know that sounds all wrong, but we see it play out over and over and over again where we give them everything we think they'll ever want. We shield them from everything that we think would ever be distracting from the, the goals that we want them to succeed in. But in that process, we teach them that God's house is something we do when something else doesn't come up. 
that worshiping the Lord is something that is a side note to who we are. And so where does it where does the fix come in? Well, each believer in the Lord Jesus Christ needs to prioritize God as number one and allow our calendar to reflect it, allow our resources to, to reflect it. And so I want to encourage you, you're starting a brand new week. Why not live this week as if God is the most important thing, the most important person in your life? And let others see that importance. Let's live a week where God is number one. And I know that you will enjoy the results. Have a great day.